Hi. It's time we had a talk about preferences and settings and how many of them there are. Because there's a lot in Studio One. There's a dizzying amount of preferences and settings in Studio One. So let me be your guide and show you some of the most important ones so you know where they are. And in the future, if you need to change them, you know how to. It's important that you open up the session that we just created in the last video. So for me, that's 650, like the headphones I'm wearing. And we're going to work from there to change some settings and preferences together. So when you see something happen, you can just push pause in the video and then go do the same on your end and then come back to the video. So there's a main preferences window that we want to be able to access. And it's in a very similar place in uh, the Mac operating system and the PC operating system. We can find it up in the Studio One menu on the menu bar at the top. Just look for Studio One. On the Mac, it's over here. On the PC, it's more over here, I believe. And when we click this on Mac, we see Preferences. And on PC, it'll be another sub-menu called Options and then Preferences. So we can click this, and it brings up a menu. You may be seeing a slightly different menu, but it's all part of the same Preferences menu. And before we get into it, we're going to look at another way to open it. So let's close this. And what I'm going to do is push Command, Comma. That's Control, Comma on PC. So I'm holding Command, and I press Comma, and there it is. This is the way I always do it. This is way faster than having to go to a menu. And because we will have to get to this uh, Preferences menu quite often, it's good to know that shortcut. Command, Comma, or Control, Comma. There's a third way to get here which is by going to the Start page, which you can find up here, Song Start and Project. We'll go to Start, which is this page. And from here, you can click basically anything in this setup area. So you can click the picture or the name or whatever. I'll click the picture, and here we are again. So let's first move back to our song view, and let's use Command, Comma, or Control, Comma to open the Preferences menu. Here we are. So let's do a general overview of some of the basic settings here. And in the next few videos, we're going to go through everything that you can find in here and set it up correctly, or at least a way that is most beneficial for us right now. So starting at the general category and the general tab, we see when Studio One starts, what to do. Well, I leave it on do nothing. This means that when it opens, you're going to see the start page, and you can choose what to do. But if you like, you could open the last song you worked on, open a default song, meaning just a certain song that you set, and it will always open that one, or it will create a new song every time you open it. If you want one of these, just set it up. I myself like to make the decision every time, so I go with do nothing. Below we see check for updates. This is good to do. As I mentioned before, Studio One will be updated um, on a regular basis, so it's important to have this checked so that when you first start it up each day, it will check to see if there's a new version that you can download and you might get new features and whatever else. Below is language. If you so desire, you can use Studio One in French or Italian or Chinese. It might be pretty exciting, though difficult. We're moving over to the Appearance tab. This is pretty cool. You can change a lot of the way that Studio One looks. Mainly here is the color. So if we move, move along the Hue Shift, you see we get a totally different vibe. This kind of is a general color for the whole thing. And these other um, sliders below kind of augment that color. So this is even more intense or brighter, darker, whatever you like. So I'm going to set these to zero. Now, if you need to reset a control in Studio One, you can hold Command or hold Control and click it, and it goes back to zero. Pretty cool. So what's of interest to us here is the arrangement. The arrangement means this arrange view, which is the timeline where we arrange all our events. And you can choose to make the background brighter if you like, or darker. Personally, I like the basic setting, but I do like the contrast high, and I'll show you why. It makes the grid lines really apparent. And since we're going to be using the grid all the time, you may as well have high contrast grid lines. It makes it easy to see what you're doing. So I like to have that set. So you could do that too if you like. Moving over to keyboard shortcuts. This is really cool. This is where you find all the keyboard shortcuts for everything in Studio One. 
Uh, if you're ever bored, you can just read through this whole list and see how many cool things there is that can that, that can be done. There are that can be done here. And um, a lot of them don't have shortcuts assigned to them right now. So if you see something you'd like, you can just click it and then move over to the enter key. And you could just type in any combination of keys you want um, to activate this uh, parameter or function, whatever it is you're choosing. And then that would be the shortcut for that thing. So one thing we are going to do is change our record shortcut, keyboard shortcut, because by default, um, it's on a key that certain keyboards don't have, actually. So we're just going to type in the search box here, record. And then we're looking down here to transport record. Now, I've already changed mine to R, as you can see. But that'd be good for you to do as well, or if a different key, if you'd like. What all you do is come down here and type R, and then it will ask you if you want to replace, because there will be a command that's already using R, but that's totally fine. You can just replace that one because record is more important. And myself, I like to have it on R because it's easy to remember. So I'm clicking on transport, record, setting that key to be R just by typing it in like this and then pushing a sign and it will ask you to overwrite a previous one and then you're good to go. So you can look through this in your own time and we'll talk about some more as we go, but this is the most important one. Um, this network function allows you to actually control aspects of Studio One from your iPad, which is really cool. So if you wanna do that, you can leave this on and this has to do, um, if you have a laptop or something that is um, touch sensitive and you can use touch input to control Studio One. I don't have that, so it doesn't apply to me. So that's all for the general settings. We're gonna continue on in the next video with some more preferences.